the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Ms. Toy. Thank you. This is a study meeting. This will set the agenda for the 1,941st regular meeting of the Livonia City Council, which will be a voting meeting and will take place on March 23rd of 2022. At this time tonight, no votes will be taken. Uh, we have a full council. All seven of our friends are here. Do we have any audience communication? We have no audience communication. Do we have any announcements from the city council? Council? There appear to be no announcements. All right, so again, this is a study meeting. No votes will be taken, but members will offer uh, various resolutions, such as an approving, a denying, or referring to a committee of the whole. Those items will be specifically voted on at the next regular meeting of the city council. We will start off with item number one, new business, a request to waive the city's noise ordinance from Reverend Dr. Roderick Constantin of St. Rafka Maronite Catholic Church in order to hold a cultural festival with music played by a DJ and live bands at St. Rafka Maronite Catholic Church at 32765 Linden on Saturday, August 20th, 2022 from 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. and Sunday, August 21st from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Do we have any here from anybody here from St. Rafka? There is not council any motions at this time, Mr. I'll, McCullough. I'll offer a, approving for regular, and hopefully the petitioner can show up to that meeting. Okay, we have an approving on the regular for item number one. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes, Mr. Donovic. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, to Mr. Bernier, I know in the past we held a committee meeting on this sort of topic, uh, having these kind of outdoor events with music and whatnot. Has, has anything come from those committee meetings to kind of help with this process or not yet? The short answer is no. Uh, the long answer is we are, we were looking at, <laughs> thank you. We were looking at trying to come up with some sort of a design. Uh, I think what it's really gonna come down to, quite frankly, is when council approves it, that they approve it and that they have to work with Jerome Hanna because they give the permits on it. And uh, the problem we were having, as I understand it, is that oftentimes they would come too late to get it the, the approval and the stage was already set up and that was the problem. So we're trying to come up with a, a system where they have to contact the uh, Jerome Hanna's department sooner than, uh, than they do so that they can make sure that the stage, stage is faced the right way, the noise per, goes the, wrong, the right way, those kind of things. But we don't have anything in effect not, as of now but council can always, as we say in any resolution, put in terms and conditions for the noise ordinance. For the I noise appreciate that. Waiver. Just with the seasons changing, getting warmer, I, I anticipate more of these items come before council and hopeful that we can have some sort of system. Thanks, Mr. Bernier. Item number two, a waiver petition from the Planning Commission, petition 2022-01-02-01, submitted by LAG development requesting waiver use approval to demolish the existing commercial building and use the property for storage and display of vehicles in connection with an automotive dealership, La Fontaine Hyundai of Livonia at 34801 Plymouth Road, located on the south side of Plymouth Road between Stark and Wayne Roads in the northwest section, in the northwest quarter of section 33. Notification was sent to Taylor Lynn of LAG, LAG development council Petitioner, ma'am, your name and address for the record, please. Hello, my name is Taylor Lynn. Um, my address is 9990 uh, East Highland Road in Howell. Um, I am a, an employee of LAG Development associated with LaFontaine Automotive Group. Uh, LAG Development is the Construction and Facilities Management Division of LaFontaine. Um, uh, as established in the Planning Commission meeting at the 22nd of February, um, we're proposing to demo the existing Doughboy Donut Shop um, to remove an eyesore and to optimize the development of the site. Um, removal of the building also allows for uh, better flow into the Hyundai site. As some of you um, might have heard, um, we're mandated by the manufacturers to do a new image program for all three of our dealerships. Um, and Hyundai is mandating that we do an addition to our service area. 
Um, and our, our intention with this parcel that was formerly known as a Doughboy Donut Shop is to rezone it, obtain a waiver use, and then do a parcel combination with the, the parking lot behind it and the Hyundai dealership itself um, to kind of square off the, the Hyundai dealership itself. Um, with the current proposed design of the parking lot, there will be a drive aisle from where the donut shop is directly into the parking lot behind it. Yes, there. Um, it was also discussed um, at the last Planning Commission meeting uh, the potential of removing a drive as there is two on the site currently. And then you also have the third one um, at the Hyundai site as well, Hyundai dealership. Um, we would like to keep both drives um, if possible. However, if removing a drive is contingent on our approval, we would like to remove the uh, westward most drive. Um, we are also asking for a variance from the 20 foot front yard setback. Um, on the east side of our uh, site plan, you can see that we do have the 20 foot yard setback so that it's continuous with the, um, with the green space on the Hyundai dealership <coughs> parcel. Um, we have a 10 foot setback proposed in the middle and to the most western um, green space. Um, now, um, if, we were, if we had to remove a, a drive, um, we would like to propose that we fill that drive with more 10 foot green space. Um, that way it all looks uniform. If we, were, if we were made to comply with the 20 foot yard setback requirement, we would lose about three spaces, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when you have 40 parking spaces on one parcel, that's roughly 8%. And this parcel will be used for the storage and display of vehicles, and it'll have vehicles from all three of our sites. And if you've driven by the sites, been in the parking lots, it's really congested, there isn't a lot of parking. So three spaces means we can have three cars that are um, sellable in that parcel and have room for three customer parking spots, just, just for an example. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm here if you have any other questions. Thank you, ma'am. Council? Mr. Chair. Ms. Torrey? I, I tend to want to approve this because it makes perfect sense. I believe what you're talking about, but I kind of like to hear from um, Mr. Taramina what his thoughts were, if I could, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, sir. Sure. Um, just to follow up on what Taylor uh, said and to add to that, um, one of the benefits of the landscape design, they've, they're complying with the planting requirements along Plymouth Road. These are new requirements that we instituted with the, the new zoning regulations, but they're also adding uh, PRDA streetscape improvements in the form of brick piers and fencing uh, to, to the three areas uh, on either side of uh, the driveways and in the uh, center. Uh, the Planning Commission did consider requiring uh, the elimination of one of the driveways, but realizing that the OEM was gonna mandate the improvements to the service um, area within the next year or so, it was felt that uh, they would uh, wait until such time to decide you know, how, what that looked like and whether or not it would be one or the other driveway or maybe even relocate the driveway. Uh, it makes sense because uh, where they intend to make the opening to the existing parking lot is, is located here in the southeast corner. Uh, the, uh, the last thing I'll mention is with respect to lighting. There are six pole mounted fixtures shown on this plan. They're 20 feet in height, uh, full cutoff fixtures, so they meet uh, the requirements in that sense. Uh, the illumination levels are slightly higher than what we require under the ordinance, uh, section 7-2. Um, however, there are no residential areas uh, directly affected by the lighting. Uh, so that is uh, another item that council can waive uh, with the, the approval of the site plan as it's been presented and approved by the Planning Commission. Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to offer an approving then. Okay. We have an approving. Is that for consent or regular? Um, Any objections? I, I regular. Like, yeah. yeah, I'd like that to regular. be in the regular. Okay. okay. We have an approving for the regular. Any other motions, Council? Mr. McCullough? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through the chair to the petitioner, uh, just so I've got this right, the only area that is getting new asphalt is the site of the old building footprint when the donut shop goes down. Is that correct? Yes, and if there's, say, we need to do a little bit of patching here or there, maybe do a reseal it, um, but it shouldn't um, mess with the stormwater calculations at all. No, and then uh, I don't have it in front of me, but how, how generally is, is, is the pavement there? Is it, is it it's, fine? It's not too bad, no. Okay. I, I just obviously won't throw it in there, but doing a seal coat with, uh, around the, the, the surrounding areas. 
might be beneficial just yeah we were we were thinking that it's probably going to be necessary once everything's done and the building's demoed no I, I hate to see the donut shop go but uh, <laughs> uh, you know this is another area especially with the the PRDA doing those enhancements that's mm -hmm. key I think that's good for your business as well and it's appreciative for the whole Plymouth Road corridor so thank you thank you thank you ma'am you have an approving for the regular so if you can we'd like you to join us on March 23rd in case any additional questions come up okay absolutely thank you so much thank you ma'am item number three a request to approve budgeted budget adjustments for fiscal year ending in November 30th of 2021 from the Department of Finance to transfer ex excess budget from CARES Act state shared revenue district court and senior services to medical self-insurance and recreation athletics and to transfer excess budget from various police divisions to various fire divisions. Mr. Slater, good evening. Good evening, Council. As we uh, do on an annual basis, um, this is our request for final budget adjustments for our last fiscal year. And as you described in the introduction, it uh, really takes dollars where we've had favorable budget uh, uh, experience and moves it to uh, areas where the experience has been less favorable. Bottom line uh, to our uh, general fund is, is zero. It's just moving from one area to another. And we'd ask to, uh, for your uh, concurrence and be happy to answer any questions. Mr. Barr. Uh, Mr. Slater, uh, just one question that out of curiosity, the, it's a large number that is being moved to firefighting salaries and wages. How, how is it that we, I'm sure there's a simple explanation, but how, how is it that we didn't see that coming ahead of time or that ended up being more than what we had budgeted that, by that amount? Yeah, that is really caused by the retention bonuses which uh, were implemented about the time the budget was being put together, but it wasn't part of the budget. Got it. I'll offer improving for consent if there's no objection. There appear to be no objections. We have an approval for consent. There's also no audience present. So we'll move on to item number four. A request to, for authorization to waive the sealed bid process and to replace Dell network servers and data backup equipment from the Division of Police to replace network servers and backup equipment that are out of warranty or at end of life from budgeted funds. Good evening, Chief. Can you tell us what this is about? Good evening, Council President, and good evening, Council Members. Uh, so yes, yeah, so this is a request for three new servers for the police department. One of those servers is a backup server, and that server uh, backs up all our systems. I should back up a little bit. So these three servers are replacing three current servers that are end of life and out of warranty. So we have a backup server we're going to be replacing that does all our backups of our own important information. We also have a domain controller server which controls access to all our systems including who has access and how much access they have. And our third server is the Hyper-V server, which sounds really cool because it is. It's virtual server, and virtual servers are the way to go now because they're less hardware and they last longer and they're better warranties. And that's replacing a current virtual server and others. Uh, so those are the three servers. The backup server also has a tape library, which is also replacing end-of-life tape library, which is separate backup system in case we have catastrophic loss. And so we are requesting that and uh, it's from budgeted funds through using the Dell Michigan contract pricing customer agreement. And that's why we're asking for a waiver of the bid process. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you, Chief Counsel. Mr. M Mr. Morgan. Chief, a uh, quick question uh, for these servers. Uh, what is the life expectancy of these things and how long have the previous ones lasted? Good question, thank you, Councilman. So our current three servers, two of them were bought in 2008, and one was bought in 2012, so well over 10 years. Warranties typically with these servers are between three, five, and seven years. The newest servers here have warranties of seven years. Um, so we are long overdue. We did budget for it last year to buy them this year, so that's where we're at. Any motions? So moved. Yeah, I'll support that. Oh, go ahead. We'll offer, uh, we'll take that as an approving from Mr. Morgan. I'll add a random comment here. I, just about 2008, although this is not directly relevant, I used to smart, start every day walking from the courthouse to the police station with a tape drive <laughs> to 
to put that in a safe in the police department and count the bond money. So that's Indeed. what this is jogging my memory about. <laughs> Very random, but that was our backup at the time. All right, so you have an approval for consent. We'll move on to item number four, request for authorization to waive the sealed bid process and to replace, oh, excuse me. Five. Five, I'm sorry. Request to approve specialized services transportation operating assistance program from third party contract for the period of October 1, 2021 through September 30, 2022 between the City of Livonia and SMART from the Livonia Housing Commission with grant funds to be used for the Livonia Community Transit Program to provide life, excuse me, lift equipment, transportation to senior and disabled residents of the city. Good, good evening. Good, good evening. Um, yep, we are just, uh, this is, I'm here to request approval to enter into a contract with SMART in the amount of $29,921. This funding is used to, to support the operations of the transportation department relative to um, assisted equipment for transport. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Ms. Toy. I believe this is more of a housekeeping manner, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Yes. We do this all the time. Every, um, yes. And I think we do a good job at it, don't we? Yes. Yeah, I know you're partial on that, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, I'd like to ask for an approving on consent, if I may. Any objections? I see none. We have an approving on consent for number five. Number six on the agenda, request for informal approval of the proposed program and tentative budget for 2022-2023 Community Development Block Grant CBDG program from the Livonia Housing Commission so that a second public hearing can be held on this matter, after which time a final program and budget will be forwarded to the council for formal adoption. Yes, ma'am. Um, again, I'm just here requesting approval of an informal budget. Uh, typically during this time, we're waiting for our CDBG allocation from HUD. We have not received that yet, so it's really hard for us to do a final budget. Um, so what we do is we do take our programmed funds from last year and uh, a proposed estimate of what we will be receiving for this coming year and try to determine what programs um, that we're going to budget. During the... Uh, comment period, we do request the public and departments and nonprofits to give us ideas on what we would like to do for the next 22-23 budget year. Um, as of right now, we're still planning on doing the same projects, the home rehab, minor home repair, uh, focusing on the maintenance of our scattered sites. We do plan on selling some of our scattered sites this upcoming year to create a different type of rental program, um, such as a tenant-based rental assistance. Uh, we also are going to be doing a parks project um, that, will be, that will include a baseball diamond for physically disabled children, um, as well as continuing our transportation, mental health, utility assistance, and supporting First Step Domestic Violence Shelter. Thank you. Council. Mr. President. Mr. Donovan. So I think this funding is critical uh, to continue to do what you do in your department. Um, I do worry that HUD will have increasingly uh, delayed time periods this year. So this bridge funding, so to speak, will be critical. So uh, I'd like to offer an approving on consent if there's no objection from my colleagues. There appear to be no objections from the council. We have an approving for consent. Again, still no audience. We'll move on to number seven. Request to approve an addendum to the sublease agreement between the City of Livonia and Livonia Civic Arenas from the Department of Parks and Rec to suspend lease payments for Eddie Edgar Ice Arena for 12 months beginning August 1st of 2022. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Council President. Ted Davis representing Parks and Recreation. We're asking Council to approve a sublease agreement between LCA and the City. This is for the suspension of lease payments. We did the same thing last year. Uh, what we're noticing with our current partner right there, Livonia Civic Arena, is, is they're still struggling coming out of the pandemic. Uh, they have large capital needs that they need to take care of, and this is one way we can help them. Their long-term health, their viability is, is incredibly important to us. They are a good partner. They run Eddie Edgar and Debonair Arenas. This is the suspension of a $2,000 a month lease payment. Um, 
it is not going to severely impact the Parks and Recreation Department nor the city, and we feel, again, it's important to, to assist them in any way we can. I'm happy to answer any questions council might have on this. Mr. Barr. Uh, Ted, when you say they're struggling coming out of the pandemic, is that primarily in the form of just leagues and programs struggling to get people to come back, or? I don't think that. I, I know at one point uh, when they were shut down, I was informed that within one week they were going to close up shop and be done. That's how close it was to not having an LCA running our, our arenas. So they were thankfully able to open up within that time frame, but it was literally within one week of them just, you know, I don't know, I don't know if I'd say declare bankruptcy, but simply no longer exists. Yeah, they don't have people coming in paying fees for programs and yep. ice time and stuff like that. Is what what does the trajectory look like on that right now? Is it recovering or it's recovering for them. I mean, I had a conversation with their president, uh, Glenn Long, and, and they're moving in the right direction, but this is just you know, one small way we can assist them, and I'm, I, I'm happy to recommend this. Yeah, I'll counsel. offer this proving for consent if there's no objection. Um, I, I guess the reason for my question is just trying to see into the future and see what, you know, is this an ongoing thing or is do we see a trajectory where we anticipate next year we'll be okay? And that's what I'm trying to get a sense of. Yeah, at this point, I mean, Councilman Barr, I would hope that we would be okay next year. Um, but again, I, there's too many variables in play. Uh, there really is. I mean, you have Eddie Edgar's in good shape for sure, but we want to maintain it that way. Devon is an aging ice rink that is, has a lot of delayed capital needs, um, and we'll continue to monitor the situation and work with LCA the best we can. Okay, thanks. Mr. President. Mr. Donovan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Davis, uh, for the lease payments, do you anticipate recuperating these payments at a later time, the back end of the lease, or this is just a wash? I think this is just a wash. We're not going to try to backfill these lease mm -hmm. payments by charging them four or six thousand uh, dollars in a subsequent contract. Uh, I just think this is, uh, again, I mean, I, I think this is just a wash for us at mm -hmm. this point. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Mr. McCullough. Thank you, Council President. Uh, to the chair, to Mr. Davis. Just to go on record, I, I've been, you know, obviously I'm in the hockey world, and one rumor, and I think it's just a rumor, I wanted to touch base with you on this, is that there is rumor swirling that Devon Air will be sold. I know that these are probably not factual, but I just want to confirm on the record. Yeah, they're not factual, okay. not even close to factual. I mean, yeah. Okay. No. That's, and that's, that's, a, that's what, I, what I told, uh, I heard from multiple people that, Devon Air was going to be turned into a subdivision. I said, yeah, that's news to me. But, that would be uh, news to me as well. I could say on the, um, the trajectory, maybe giving some insight, is the, the association numbers are up. Uh, I know just even through the might level all the way up through the squirt level, um, it, it, it seemed like things are picking back up. Good. Hopefully that sticks. Uh, maybe the Red Wings could win something and then we'll have an uh, influx of hockey players. But everything that I've seen at the arenas looks good. I know that this will definitely help and help uh, Eddie Edgar. They're a great partner. Thank you. Mr. McCullough, are you a mite or, or are you a squirt? Depend yeah. Depends on the day. <laughs> those are the only two options. <laughs> Depends on the There's day. There's only two <laughs> options for him. <laughs> Mr. Davis, uh, a serious question here. So I can I can appreciate everything that you've said, and I think, you know, we, we value um, LCA as a strategic partner. To what degree uh, are you or somebody in Parks and Rec involved in their capital planning and how far in depth do you look at the books? And not to say we don't trust Mr. Long, we obviously do, um, but how, like how well do you grasp the situation? Is it communication, like a yeah, conversation there, or is it more in depth from that? Uh, there is both actually. I mean, we do speak frequently on the state of the arenas as, as I do with Justin Feldman, also the arena manager there. We get their yearly budget, uh, we get their actuals, and we get their capital expenditures that they do in a given year. Uh, and then we get a proposed capital for the, the, for the upcoming year. Um, I mean, it's, it's hard. To, I mean, other than that, I'm not involved in their operation, nor do I don't wish to be, and they don't wish me to be. So I'm simply an interested party in this, uh, so, someone who doesn't want to see the city uh, take this asset back necessarily. They're doing a good job and I'd prefer to keep the, the partner viable. So just a follow-up question. In regards to the capital improvements and any maintenance work that has to be done at the arenas, sure. is that completely privately done or 
is DPW involved in that at all, or to what extent is this? Because a lot of times these relationships, they're still a little flow back and forth. Sure. Uh, so the answer to your question is yes. Um, interior, interior improvements or capital projects would be, for the most part, handled by LCA. Exterior would probably be the city, for the most part. Okay. Thank you, sir. You have an approving for consent from Mr. Barr. Thank you. We'll move on to item number eight, a request to approve Parks and Recreation Master Plan for the 2022-2026 Master Parks and Recreation Plan, PR 3819-22, a prerequisite in applying for state and federal funding. Mr. Davis. Thank you, Council President. Uh, we are asking for Council, this is actually acting as our public hearing. We had a 30-day public comment period for our master plan. Um, I remember vividly uh, at the time, Council President McIntyre for our last plan uh, asked who was going to play me in the role that this was, of course, a movie. Uh, I believe I said Bruce Willis. I think that's an insult to Bruce Willis, quite honestly. But we are back before you for an updated master plan after our 30-day review. Uh, this is for public comment. Uh, I can give you some highlights on the master plan. We were very pleased this time around. To give you an example, in 2016, we had 276 survey responses. This time around, we had 2,524 survey responses. Uh, our public comment, our period was exceptional as well when we had this out. We developed, obviously, what are, our pro what are the community's priorities? Maintaining our existing parkland is very high protecting the environment, maintaining our existing programming and events. Uh, again, the priority is develop and improve existing facilities, develop more passive recreation, preserve our natural areas. If you look at even our goals, our goals match up with this. We linked our goals to Vision 21 as well. Uh, we're very, this was the first time we've done this in-house here in a number of years. Uh, I think we did overall a pretty good job. Probably took us a little bit longer than I would have liked, but then again, most things do. So here we are again. I'm happy to answer any questions council might have on this if the, or if the public has any comment on the, the master plan before them. Mr. Chair. Ms. Toy. If I may, uh, to Mr. Email. Davis. Um, Mr. Davis, I just want to compliment you and your team on what an excellent job you do with the Parks and Rec. I mean, from all your programming to, um, you know, not only the sports teams, but the natural areas, the bridges you build, and, and all the good stuff that, that you've done since you've been here. Um, honestly, you've been doing a great job with the multi-hats you have on. Now, there's some other areas I would question yet. No, I'm teasing, but- I understand. Yeah, but, <laughs> sir, you're, you're doing a fabulous job when it comes to this, and I just wanted to be one person to compliment you on it. Thank you. Thank you. For all you're doing. Is that an approving, Ms. Uh, sure, we can have an approving. Yes, sir. Sorry, I got carried away. Any objections to that being on consent? There appear to be none. Mr. Davis, you are a figurative and literal bridge builder. I am. <laughs> that could yeah. be your uh, LinkedIn tag. Mr. Uh, <laughs> Harry Tadigen Park and Nature Preserve, we have a bridge there that we built. Yeah, we'll let you know when that little area under the bridge needs to be dredged. We'll get you out there. And <laughs> Boy, thank you. Item number nine, award of bid from the Department of Public Works for professional architectural services for Newburgh Village HVAC improvements from budgeted funds. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Council. Thank you. Um, so this project in relation to HVAC improvements at Newburgh Village would include replacement um, of the HVAC in all 120 senior living units that are within the Newburgh Village apartments. Each one of those apartments has its own dedicated HVA system uh, located in a small utility room. That current setup uh, uses the domestic hot water tank to heat um, supply cools or supply coils uh, that create warm air for the furnace to uh, emit throughout those uh, units. It's a very inefficient and problematic system. That equipment's uh, obsolete. It's beyond its useful life and requires replacement. So the proposed scope of the project is to replace those antiquated systems um, with new uh, gas-fired furnaces and remote condensing units, as well as replacing the existing hot water heaters uh, with new units that will be used exclusively for domestic plumbing needs instead of for heating the homes. Um, 
that also requires some electrical connections and controls uh, for the system that are going to be pro programmable thermostats. So in order to proceed with the design and the bidding of this project, uh, we sent out a request for proposals to our four as-needed architects, and those firms responded. Um, Detroit Architectural Group was the uh, lowest bidder in responding to those. So it's our recommendation that Council proceed, proceed to award professional architectural services for this project through the QBS process um, to Detroit Architectural Group in the amount not to exceed $62,705 from budgeted funds. With that, I'd be happy to take any questions. Mr. President. Mr. Donovic. Thank you, Mr. Jolly. Uh, Mr. Rushlow, do these uh, updated systems include updated thermostats as well? Yes. Okay. Yep. And if I understand correctly, these HVAC systems are essentially the, the originals from 1990s when the units were built? They are original systems, yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, I'd like to offer an approving on consent to uh, the Detroit Architectural Group for the lowest and most qualified bidder, I may add. Uh, they're a well-respected company, and I think they'll do a great job in this development. I know during the, during the earlier portion of this year, there was a lot of discussion about losing power at Newburgh Village and making sure that residents in, in the summertime, excuse me, had uh, uh, air conditioning and whatnot. So I know this is a really important matter, and hopeful in the future that some sort of uh, generator system or something along those lines will be added as well so we can minimize any kind of issues with uh, residents during the hot seasons or the cold seasons. Thank you, Mr. Rushlow. You're welcome. You have an approving on consent. I saw this item and I saw the uh, architect here and I thought this was gonna go in a different direction in terms of uh, the particular architect having something to do with being full of hot air or something like that. I thought that might be an appropriate fitting gesture, but it's qualified nonetheless. Uh, item number 10, award of bid from the Department of Public Works for professional architectural services for the DPW Rhodes Barn Roof Replacement from budgeted funds. You're yeah, up. thank you again. Um, so the, the Rhodes Barn is situated on the DPW campus, houses large equipment that's primarily used for the Rose Department. Um, this is an original roof uh, sheet metal system, was constructed in 1960. Um, the original system had 12 skylights with a ridge ventilation system. Um, at some point in time, there was an improvement done to add additional insulation in there, spray on insulation. Those skylights were covered up as well as the ridge ventilation system. And uh, a different type of a ventilation system was added. Um, it was essentially a, like a, fabric sock that blows air throughout the system, throughout the, um, the barn. Um, when the skylights were covered, they also added high pressure sodium lights for um, obviously for lighting in, in the barn, which is a very antiquated and inefficient type of lighting system uh, by today's means. So the proposed project includes a replacement of not just the roof, but also um, the existing lighting with new LED lights to be more efficient and add better uh, lighting quality, as well as the addition of um, some additional sources of natural light um, to help with that. Um, and then obviously improve ventilation system as well to get rid of the duct uh, sock that I had mentioned. In order to proceed with design and bidding of this project, we again went through the RFP process with our four architects. Um, the uh, lowest bidder was DLZ in this matter, and it's our recommendation that Council proceed to award a professional architect services project to DLZ um, through the QBS for the design and bidding as well as construction administration phase of this project, not to exceed $40,000 from budgeted funds. Thank you, sir. Council? Mr. McCullough? Um, I'll offer an approving for consent if there are no objections. This is the the fun preventative work that I like to kind of see, even though I know you're probably dealing with more issues long-term, but this is a great approach for both of this item and the last item. That's an approving for consent. Item number 11. I have a, just a oh, question. Do we have a representative here from DLC? Here? We do, yes. Okay. All right, I just wanted to say thank you for coming. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Item number 11, request to waive the formal bidding process and approve the 2022 pavement joint and crack ceiling program by extending the contract 21-D Unit prices with Michigan Joint Ceiling Inc. 
from the engineering division for contract 22-D in the amount of $250,000 for one year. <coughs> Mr. Zelensic. Thank you, Council President. As you recall, when we approved this last year for uh, Michigan Joint Ceiling, if they did perform very well, we would consent it for two years. They, they performed satisfactorily. We had a contract last year for 150000 We had $250,000 budgeted for this year's program. Mm -hmm. We're asking to approve that amount, $250,000, of which we're looking to spend 187000 for major and uh, 62, I'm sorry, 100, 187500 uh, for major roads and 62 for local. Thank you. Council? Mr. Chair? Ms. Toy? I'll offer an approving resolution. Okay. For, um, let's see, for regular, would you buy? Regular's good. I, Is that a right? <coughs> Does anybody on council object to that being on consent? No. Then I, I if it's I okay with you, we'll put it on consent. Sorry, I thought I saw somebody's head. No, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go with number 12. Vacating request from the engineering division to vacate a public utility easement within the Haggerty Square Phase 2, located at 19750 Haggerty Road, parcel number 04602399005-004. Mr. Zelensic. Again, this is a housekeeping issue. Unfortunately, when they built the sanitary sewer uh, for this project, uh, Phase 2, the manhole is slightly on the border of the, within the easement, which would cause an issue if they ever had, we had to do maintenance <coughs> for the public sewer. So we've asked them to vacate this and reestablish the correct uh, easement for that. So it'll be going, recommending to go to the planning commission, come back around to city council, hopefully, and uh, shouldn't be any issues as they look to reestablish the correct easement based on the survey um, information. Unfortunately, it was recorded, and uh, we're just trying to uh, make sure everything's all cleared up so that way in the future we can provide maintenance if necessary. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Council. Mr. McCullough. I'll offer an approving on. Um Consent. There are no objections. Is anyone's head? Do you see anyone? <laughs> I was. I, I did look over just to make sure. <laughs> All right. Item number thirteen. Request to approve the establishment of improvement bonds from the engineering division to assure the installation of public improvements at Heinz Place site condominium, located on the west side of Jug Handle between Plymouth and Heinz Drive in the southeast quarter section of thirty. Quarter of section thirty. Excuse me. It's uh, CR 300-21. Mr. Zelensek. Again, this is a 19 house development in which the road will be private. Uh, we're doing the public water and sewer at this location. We're just asking, again, to make sure in case something happens, we have general improvement bonds. You guys are familiar with this. Upon completion acceptance, we'll come back to City Council and get these bonds released for the appropriate time frame. Uh, looking for this new development to take place, again, over on Jug Handle. It's called Heinz Place Condo, again, 19 home development, and appreciate your assistance to uh, approve this so we can collect the, the funds from the developer, Leo Sove, and continue on with the project. Thank you. Council? Uh, Mr. Chair? Ms. McIntyre? I would like to offer the approving resolution on consent. Okay, approving on consent. There appear to be no objections from the council. There is no audience. I can't. Well, there is an audience. Well, they're, they're here because they are in some degree required to be here. <laughs> Um, so that's why there has been no going to the public. Do we have any announcements from the council? We have no audience communication, obviously. Did we announce the former member? Uh, well, I talked about the guy full of hot air. Oh, that, that's suffices. right. That's right. Um, so Livonia, it was uh, hopefully slightly entertaining and not too annoying. Uh, <laughs> we will see you on March 23rd. Good evening. Wednesday, Wednesday March 23rd. Wednesday.